Hello, welcome to the Assessment Inventory and Monitoring AIM Data Use Webinar Series. In the course of this series, we are exploring the use of AIM data at various scales of use. We have some notes for our new listeners. The series is on Teams Live. Teams Live doesn't have a feature for audience voice participation, so for better or for worse, you are all automatically muted. If you have questions, please type them into the chat box, and depending on the question, we will answer them during the presentation or at the end. Please note that the default feature for your question will be anonymous unless you enter your name. We also will need to publish your questions before the group can see it. So if don't panic if you don't see it right away. You can upvote other questions if you want to push them up the queue. It appears that viewing the presentation in the Teams desktop app will give you the best viewing experience. The presentation is being recorded and will be made available on the AIM SharePoint for VLM users. We are looking into methods by which we can share it with external users. Also, check out the SharePoint to find the links for upcoming presentations in this series. Thank you for joining us today. Alex will now introduce the upcoming presentation. Thank you so much, Alita. Uh, today, we are excited to um, present using the assessment inventory and monitoring data portal. So this is a webinar about data access. And the main presenter today is going to be um, Mike Rock. So he's our very own data support specialist here at the NOC. Um, also as presenters today, we have Sarah Burnett, uh, Doug Browning, Alita, who you heard, uh, Lauren Price, and myself, Alex Trainer. So if you have any questions, like Alita said, feel free to type them in the chat box. Uh, if you want to reach out to us, uh, we also have our email addresses here. Um, so with that, I will pass it over to Mike. Thanks a lot, Mike. You uh, can go ahead and start sharing your screen. All right. Thanks, everyone. Um, as uh, Alex and Lita said, my name is Mike Rock. And um, I am a GIS person at the NOC, right? And uh, I work with the AIM team, and our goal is to build tools that will help uh, you out in the field, field offices, district offices, uh, get your work done. So this is um, the AIM data portal, and uh, it's basically a, an ArcGIS Online mapping application that allows you to view all of the AIM data, including uh, Teradat, Aquadat, and LMF, and hopefully pretty soon, once we get data, uh, our new Lentic program. Um, and uh, it allows you, uh, like I said, to view it, but also to explore the data and uh, export it to, um, to use in various analysis uh, on your uh, on your desktop using other tools if that's what you need to do. So um, I just wanted to, before I got into the map itself and the application and what you can do, just give you a, a couple of ways of finding this thing. Um, hopefully uh, everybody is familiar with the aim.landscapetoolbox.org site. And there's a link from that site to this map. So under data management, data access, there's this link here. Let me make that a little bigger so everybody can see. Um, so this is one way to get here. If you're familiar with the BLM Aegis ArcGIS Online site, this one, uh, you can just do a, a search uh, for AIM Data Portal uh, app and it should come up. So here's the link to that AIM data portal app. So here it is. Um, I'm just going to go uh, through um, the major interface elements and help elements to, to get you kind of situated uh, to how this works. Um, probably some of you have um, seen it already in various uh, formats. Um, and I just wanted to mention real quick for those of you who have seen it before that some of the new things we have are we now have um, 
updated data to, through 2019 for um, Aquadat and, and Teradat. So that's handy. Um, and we've added uh, related tables, which I'll show you uh, in a minute, and also links to photos for some of the layers. And I'll show you that too. So some neat uh, new stuff. So when you first uh, view the portal here, you'll see this uh, splash screen that gives you some information, just a super quick overview of some of the things you can do. Um, but we don't want to see that again, so we're going to click don't show that again. Let me zoom in a bit so you can get a better view. I'll say OK. Um, and first thing you can see is we're zoomed way out here um, and have all these points. There's a lot of points. Uh, we have like 30,000 terrestrial points and 2,500 uh, from the Aquadat folks. Uh, so to make it draw faster when it first loads, this is actually just kind of a picture of the points. You don't actually, uh, you're not able to actually interact with the points until you zoom in uh, to a certain level and they start uh, drawing as real points. And then it's like a normal point that you can click on. So um, sometimes this picture gets a little behind the actual data that's available uh, that has to be generated. So if you load the map and don't see your points right away, don't freak out, zoom in, check it out. Uh, hopefully they're there. Um, so uh, we have um, a couple of different methods for getting some help on here. Uh, one is if you can see up here in the left hand side, there's a link to the quick start guide. And I already loaded that up. So that loads up this PDF here. Uh, and it just has some basic instructions for some things that you can do, uh, so how to do some queries um, to, to kind of get you oriented. And there is also uh, in the upper right, there's this little help uh, icon here that gives you some of that same, um, the same uh, instructions uh, that you can see in the splash screen. Uh, so uh, that might help as well. OK, so uh, there's also some resources here on the left hand side. Links to the benchmark tools for um, Teradat and Aquadat. Uh, I'm not sure how many of you are familiar with the Excel benchmark tools that allow you to do some analysis uh, of the points. But if you um, need to get them, the latest ones are linked uh, right here. Um, and the way that we have the data portal structured is that when you get to the point of exporting your data, it should fit right into the benchmark tools. Um, and I'll, I'll go through that uh, later on. Uh, we have some links to the geospatial portals. Uh, that's sort of the, the new SharePoint site. Um, if any of you have old links to the, the BLM's geospatial uh, SharePoint site, the old links are all um, wrong now. They, they moved it over a couple months ago. Um, so you'll need to um, come here and, and pick up those again. And you'll, you can find there some metadata about these projects. Um, SDE connection files, if you know what those are, great, and you can use them. Uh, and some more project documentation and, and just more information about um, these data sets. OK, so we don't need to see this anymore. So we're going to collapse that pane so we have more uh, map space. And I'll just take you through a couple of the basic operations. Um, so uh, it's, if you've never seen an RTS online map before, I think everybody has by this point, but they're just the basic sort of, pretty much just like a Google map. You can pan and zoom around, um, but you can also click on objects uh, and get some information about them. Now let me show you some of the, uh, tools that we have. Um, so we have a base map picker here, so you can choose if you want a different type of base map, like imagery, for example. Uh, we have a legend, can be helpful. Uh, oh, one thing I forgot to do was I have my color filter on my computer set to a colorblind color 
filter. And I have no idea if the video shows that or not. <laughs> um, so some of these colors may be a little funny. Uh, and also, if you notice some colors in the actual map are a little funny, I'm colorblind. Uh, so let me know if something looks really weird. Uh, OK, so this is the, le the layers list, and you'll probably use this quite a bit. So let me talk about it. Uh, it's divided into four uh, panes here. Uh, we got we have the aim indicators like Aquadat, Teradat, LMF, uh, some reference layers like um, GeoMac, fire perimeters. Uh, right now it only goes to 2018 because GeoMac itself went away. Long story short, um, we have some fire perimeters. Uh, we have the grazing allotments, sage grouse HMAs, admin units, and the SMA. Uh, and then we also have uh, oops, an angry cat. Uh, and um, related data, this is the kind of a new, neat new thing. We have these uh, related data tables here, down here at the bottom. You don't have to use them, but if you know what they are, it's pretty cool. It's all the raw data from right now we have Teradat and LMF. And uh, Pretty soon, I think after next year's data, we'll have um, the same for uh, Aquadat. So this is all the raw data um, that's associated with uh, the AIM indicator data, how the indicators were um, calculated. So that's available now. Uh, we're not going to directly interface with those this through the uh, layers list. So I'm going to click on the heading here and collapse that. Now we have more space to work with. Uh, in our other panes here are more useful. Um, one thing to note, I've zoomed in here a bit. So uh, when you're using it on your own, uh, there might be more space in these um, some of these uh, windows uh, than you'll see today, um, just because I know it's uh, sometimes hard to see on a presentation. OK, so um, those are the layers. Uh, and uh, we also have um, down here at the bottom, if you can see, there's this little tab that's open attribute table. So we have also have uh, an ability to look at the attribute tables. So here's all the records for Aquadat. There's 2,442 right now. Uh, I would show you Teradat and LMF, but those are quite a bit uh, bigger and um, as you know, sometimes uh, bandwidth can be an issue. Uh, in order to view these layers, um, you have to have a VPN connection on. So um, it does tend to throttle things at home. Uh, most of the time it works fairly well for me. You know, it varies by person and connection. Uh, when we get back to the offices someday, um, you know, you might be out in the in a field office, it doesn't have very good connection, so you might want to be careful with some of these operations. Um, but that's the case for everything you do out there. <laughs> and I'm sure you've learned. Uh, and then there's just like the basic, you can click on a point. Here we have um, a Teradat point, and it loads uh, all the AIM indicator data that you'll find in Teradat. So, it's all there, a lot of, a lot of data. Um, and then at the bottom, these are the related tables. So if you click um, on one of these related tables, it'll give you all the records from that related table. So in this case, it's all the species that were found there. So pretty handy. And you can even um, click on these little dots back there and view them in an attribute table. Uh, and we'll work more with uh, related tables uh, later on. Um, and I haven't checked this one. Um, we'll see if it works, but you'll see here there's a photo link. Let me see if I can zoom in on it. There we go. So you'll see that one of these uh, items here is a photo link. So we don't have them. We don't have photos for every point yet, but if you click this, you'll see if, if we do have them. Uh, they're there. So 
let me show you. I found a I found a good one. I wanted to show you. So um, I wrote it down, and we can search for it. So up here in the upper left, there's a search box. I'm going to click the down arrow and search Teradat. And then I'm going to type in the name of the plot, uh, which is D underscore four wing three. OK, click on that guy. And it brings us to that point. And you can look at the photos, and then you can look at um, there's you can see there's a well, let's see here you go you can see there's some soil photos and some transect photos so I can click on the transect and there's our transect photo which crazy transect <laughs> I don't know who did that <laughs> but um uh, that's a Good job by the crew, I guess, for being able to collect that. Um, sometimes you'll see something uh, that looks strange in the data, and you might want to see the photo for it. So um, that's how you do it. OK, so that's sort of the overview of the basic interface for navigation and, and map use. I think that it kind of makes sense for, for everybody. Um, and now I'm going to um, sort of dive into uh, how you might um, approach doing a query. So say you're working on like, I don't know, like a plant treatment project, um, or it could be a, like NEPA for a grazing allotment. Um, whatever your project is, you're going to want to find uh, AIM data to see, um, to analyze and include in your report. Uh, it's pretty important these days. Uh, if you have data, as you know, you're going to need to use it. So um, one easy uh, thing you can do with this map is you can just look and see if there's data available. Uh, and then once you have see, once you see that your data is there, um, you want to be able to pick out just what you want and then perhaps download it uh, to use in a different tool. So uh, in this case, we're just going to um, see if, uh, well, let, let me go through a couple of the queries that we have available first. So on the upper left here, you can see there's a blue and a green magnifying glass, the little search icon. The blue is for Aquadat. And you can see that there's a couple of, of um, pre-canned queries here. There's You can select by just drawing on the map. You can pick a shape, draw. Um, you can do it by an area and a date, area and a design type. These are a few of the queries that we thought were most important, most likely to be used by people out there. Um, since we had to pre-select them, pre-make them, um, we didn't want to have like 50 queries. Uh, but if, if you have any feedback on what would be most useful for the most people, then we'd be happy to hear that. And that's true of any part of this interface or the capabilities of the, of the tools here. Um, if, uh, if you have a suggestion, uh, go ahead and let us know. Um, maybe we'll be able to implement it, uh, and that would be maybe good for everybody. Okay. So that's and the, and the, that's the uh, Aquadat queries. The terrestrial queries are very similar. Um, we have some for Teradat and some for LMF, uh, and they're pretty much the same queries as the Aquadat ones. So let's go through uh, an example. Let's say that we want to find all the Aquadat points within Rich County, Utah. Um, it's been, you can see here on the map, there's been a bunch of work in Rich County. And for, uh, uh, we'll just say like a, a plant treatment project uh, or a land treatment project, uh, we, we need to find all the data from Rich County. Okay, well, I look at my layers here, I don't see counties. This is something that I think is also pretty neat. Um, 
One of these tools in the upper right, if you can see in the upper right here, is this add data tool. All right, so I click on that and I can add data from files. So if I have a shapefile of my project, um, I can just upload that and it'll appear in the map. Uh, if I have whatever um, the geographic boundaries are for your project, if you have them, you can upload them to the map and use them. Um, we're doing counties right now, for example, and so I figured it'd probably just be available um, as an existing layer. So here in this first search tab, uh, my organization, that means the BLM's ArcGIS Online account, basically. So under my organization, I'm going to just type in county and we get some results back. Uh, so I'm just going to add this uh, national states and counties layer. Uh, there's an add button right here. So there we go, it's, it's added and you can see it just drew on the map. Now, if I look at my legend, I see it there. And if I look at my layer list, uh, it appears in the layer list. There's a little quirk of ArcGIS Online. It'll add that layer to each one of these um, panels here. Uh, so sometimes it gets a little uh, busy, but uh, not too big of a deal. So once you've added it and it's on, then we can use it. So let's go back to our aquatic query, say find by area. And this looks a little complicated at first. Let me um, drag it, make it bigger so you can see all of it. Okay, I think uh, it's big enough for everybody to see. Uh, but once you've done it once, it's pretty simple. So especially the spatial relationship, there's only one. So um, we're done there. Now you pick your layer and the uh, county's layer here appears magically. So that's that was pretty cool when we figured that out. That it just appears. You don't have to do anything extra. Uh, so then um, once you've picked your layer, you're going to want to say what select which features in the layer you want to use, right? So I have a little drawing tool here. And I just go into the map and I draw my little square to select. And I go, oh, looks like I've selected two counties, uh, cash and rich. <laughs> I didn't notice that before. Ca I'm cash rich. Uh, so I'm going to clear that because I'm not actually that rich. Just a little bit. And I'm going to try it again. And now I have my county selected. Now, this is something actually I just found out today. I don't know why it took me that so long, but you can actually um, rename your career result. So find by area, rich, county, right? And then say apply, things for a second. And there you go. It's selected, um, you can see here near the top, 36 records. Those are all the Aquedat records in Rich County. Okay, and I can see it shows all the information for each one. And oh, look at this. Oh, you can't, I can't highlight it. But here it says random. The design type is random. And now I remember that I only wanted the targeted points, not the random points. Okay, so how do we do that? I'm gonna go back the beginning here. Let's close that for a second. Um, there's a couple extra tools we put in here to make it a little bit more flexible. Um, right now we can't allow people to create their own searches by scratch, like to be able to select by a certain um, attribute. So uh, we put in this custom filter tool, which looks kind of funny. See, so open it up and it's blank. You just have to know to click the, the, the button down here in the lower right to create a custom filter. This just gives you some more flexibility for how to select, how to choose which features you want. Um, I don't know how many people are going to end up needing this, but it does give you that, that more flexibility. So I click to add a new one. I select 
aqua dat and I'm going to add an expression. And what I want is just design type is, and I'll just have it calculate what the options are, targeted. Pretty simple to create. Um, and you can do it as you can see any of the fields in Aquadat, right? And if you noticed those, um, only those features that uh, meet the filter are now showing, the others are gone. Um, and you can toggle on and off the filter up here. So now they're back, you can see like the dark blue ones and the light blue. And you turn on the filter and the dark blue ones disappear. Okay, so you can close this. You can see the filter is still in effect. And then I can go find by area and do that again. Uh, go to my counties, counties, county. Do my select tool, draw the box, get rich county. And now I'm going to change the name here to rich targeted. Hit apply. And there you go. Now you can see there's only 25. Those are the ones that we want. And over here on the right under layers, you can see rich target. So it appears as a layer as well. Uh, you can click on these dots and you can um, view them as an attribute table. Uh, but also there's all these tools here in the query box that I, I wanted to show you some of them. So let's uh, first collapse these so we can kind of see them more easily. These are all the results. I click on the, I don't know what you call those ellipse buttons. We'll call it the action button. Uh, click on the action button and you get all these uh, actions that you can do. <laughs> um, everything from changing the symbol just to zooming and painting and looking at the points. That will, they'll be concerned with a couple of these specifically. Uh, I'll just show you a kind of fun one first. It's statistics. Click on that and you can click from any of the numeric um, values or fields in that uh, layer. Uh, so for this example, we'll look at macro and vertebrate count and like look at this. Every single site has 400, that's, which is the max. So that's good, right? Lots of macro invertebrates. Uh, and you can look at like non-native herbaceous vegetation, for example. And here you see uh, the values range from 14 to 100 with an average of 89. So uh, presumably if you're doing this, you know what all these numbers mean. So that can give you a sort of some insight into what you're looking at. Um, but if you're going to do any real work on like analysis on those, you're probably going to want to export your data, right? So there's a couple ways of doing that. Um, one is uh, you can export to a feature collection that gives you a map layer basically that you can import into ArcMap. So if you're doing ArcMap stuff, you can do this. Um, that's a pretty nice little tool to easily make a, a new map layer. Um, but if you're doing like statistical analysis, you probably just want to export to a CSV, right? So if you click export to CSV, uh, hopefully it'll actually download that. Um, sometimes the connection, as you know, is a little slow, but let's see if it shows up in your download. Okay, so here it is, it's downloading now. Um, but you know it is like a 19 kilobyte file, so it takes a while. So uh, this is your, just um, all the uh, um, tabular data from that layer shows up uh, in your CSV file. In a minute. <laughs> and once it loads, um, here we go. You can take that data uh, and copy it. Hold on a second. So it hasn't quite figured it out yet. 
you can copy this data into, for example, the um, aquatic benchmark tool. I'll just take a little trunk as an example. And I already opened the downloaded and opened that aquatic benchmark tool because as you can see, things take a little while sometimes. So paste the data in there. And then if you've ever seen this tool, great, you know how to do it, but um, there's a extensive set of directions here that brings people through the process uh, that allows you to an analyze the indicators uh, according to whatever um, needs that your project has. And it's the same for terrestrial. We have a terrestrial, best, terrestrial benchmark Excel tool, um, and it works the same way. You just uh, save those, um, save your query results as a CSV. And for the terrestrial one, you can import them with a little macro. Um, so it's, it works pretty well. All the um, fields are in the right order uh, and you can just plug and play, hopefully. Um, so that's a, a fun, uh, well, that's a very useful tool, hopefully, <laughs> and fun. Um, okay, so that's an example of how you might get um, your Aquadat data uh, for just what you need. Uh, into the benchmark tool. Uh, now, unfortunately, at this point, um, you can't export like query and export all of the uh, different layers, Aquadat, Teradat, LMF, at one time. You have to do each one separately. So if you wanted the Teradat uh, points in Rich County, you do the same thing but with the Teradat select by area tool, right? Okay, um, but you've already seen that, so I don't really want to do it again, right? But I wanted to show you some, some people have um, come to me and said, that's what I want to do is find all the points within, a, say, a grazing allotment. It's almost the same exact process, except for you already have grazing allotments in the map. So you can see here on the right, we can turn on our grazing allotments. You have to turn the layer on or you can't use it. And then you would go to your select by area for Teradat. Uh, you would pick grazing allotments, pick that drawing tool, click your little square to select that, that allotment. And as you saw, you could also do multiple, oops, Click your drawing tool again, multiple allotments. Right now, um, haven't figured out how to do multiple non-contiguous, but um, at least you can do it <clears throat> do this way. Uh, and then over here, I've changed the name to, uh, I'll just say grazing, say apply, and it'll pick those, in this case, 30 teradat points. And then everything else is the same, except I did want to show you again uh, the related table uh, function. So if you click that action button there, you can see where it says show all related records. So if you're wondering about those, it's like for every um, indicator in AIM, uh, and like in Teradat, it's based on the calculation of a bunch of like, say, like LPI pin drops, right? So if you wanted that raw data of every single pin drop, you can find it in here. Um, maybe too much for some people, but some people uh, really uh, have a use for um, the raw data itself. In this case, um, we're looking at the plant species and it has every single plant species found amongst those 30, uh, the thir 30 plots. Some of them are gonna listed multiple times because they've been found in multiple plots. Um, but as you can see, there's a lot here. Uh, might not be super useful to use it this way. So you can go to the action button and export that to a CSV. Get some statistics, not on plant species, I don't think, but um, uh, 
it, it's like a, uh, I think a lot of people use it for uh, maybe it was soils. Um, and you can see there's a whole bunch of different um, tables here that you can look at and you'll know if you're doing this, you'll know which data you need. And uh, we have metadata on that geospatial uh, portal site that allows you to see every single table, what every single um, table uh, field is in every table uh, and all the uh, different um, uh, features or layers. So actually I wanna just, maybe we can quickly show that. I think we still have a few enough time. Um, here's the geospatial portal page for, uh, in this case, it's Teradata and LMF. Oh, almost got it. Um, okay, uh, you can see here, there's the, let me zoom in, data links, and here's those table descriptions I was telling you about, and here's the PDF. Here, I'll minus it actually to show you. Look how awesome that is. We have all this information there for you to, to look at so you can understand the data better. Okay. Um, so uh, that's a, a, hand, a handy feature for a lot of people is to be able to access those related tables and download them. Okay, and then now I want to show you another cool thing that's new in the past year, uh, which, let me close this pane again, so we have more map area. Um, and let me turn off grazing allotments. Oh, and also the custom filter, I'm going to turn that off. You see all those Aquadat points showed back up? So sometimes when you're using this map, a lot of you have a lot of layers going on, a lot of stuff, and maybe you're getting a little bit lost. Just refresh it. It's easy to refresh. Um, if you have uh, results layers from the queries, you might lose those. But usually, once you've done it once, like once you figure out how to do it, it's pretty easy to recreate. So feel free to refresh anytime. Sometimes things bog down. You know how it is. So refresh the page, start over, no problem. Okay, so one of the queries that I mentioned, but we haven't looked at yet, uh, is the species query. So I'm gonna go back to the query page. And you can see the last one here is Aquadat species occurrence. All right, so we can search for any uh, species has been found out there and is in the Aquadat uh, data. So, for example, we're going to search for um, Cardria. Oops. Or, okay, Cardaria draba, which I forget what that is, but it's some kind of invasive species that I'm sure all of you aquatic people know. And I'll say it down here, Cardaria and hit apply and see what we get. So I just searched the entire country, all our data. That was really fast. That gives me hope maybe the Teradat one will work too. Uh, and we came back with 26 records of uh, sites where that species was found. Now that you have it, you can see some of the data we have for it. So for example, for this first plot here, it says percent plots present 20. So percent plots present is 36. You can get an idea of the, um, well, I don't know what the exact scientific word is, relative abundance. Sorry if I, if I have it wrong, but the percent plots present, we'll say that. <laughs> um, and you can also then of course export to a CSV or to your uh, feature collection, which allows you to make a map. Um, you can get some statistics if you have something here that you wanted to, to see. I think we did that for percent of plot present. Yeah, it's the only one. Um, we get an average of 
32, we'll say. So it's kind of fun to just explore that way um, and, uh, and see how that, that works. OK, so uh, that was Aqu Aquadat species search, but you can also do it terrestrial-wise. So I open a terrestrial query, going back to the original page here. And I'm going to do another Teradat search because I'm not sure what to search for in LMF. But LMF is pretty much exactly the same as Teradat, pretty much. Uh, that's why I'm not actually going through it. Um, but it has the same searches and the same database structure. Uh, so um, if you're familiar with Teradat, then you can use LMF as well. Let's do a species indicator search. And I'm going to try a national search um, and see how fast it goes. When you're in, when you're at the knock <laughs> on a good day, it runs pretty quickly. I'm going to search for um, birdie, which I, f I also forget what that is, but it's a good one. It's fun to search for. And you can see that nothing came up. Um, it was kind of looking as I went through and typed that, and then it came up blank. Don't panic there. It just it only has like a certain number that it kind of preloads to search for. So you just hit the search more button there, and there we, we found Birdie. I'm going to click on that. And, oops, and see what happens. So sometimes it just takes a couple seconds, and sometimes it crashes. <laughs> um, and over VPN, I'm sure it'll be quick. Uh, or take a couple seconds. But once you get the results back, um, there's actually over 10,000 hits, uh, which seems like a lot. And But under good circumstances uh, in your offices, and maybe under VPN, if, if you have a good connection, you can get a whole nationwide distribution for whatever species you have of interest. So, um, that's pretty fun. If you just limit it uh, to one state, uh, which is probably most people are going to be working in one state, district office, field office, um, then it's obviously going to be much faster. So I'm going to do a, um, a refresh, refresh the whole map since it's taking too long here, uh, and then just show you that real quick. Um, maybe. Uh, Oh, uh, it returned our results, and but it's still trying to refresh the map, so you might not see it. So that was like, what, a minute, minute and a half? That's not too bad for a nationwide search of, of, however, of thousands, tens of thousands of points um, over VPN from home. So if you need to do it, then um, it, it'll, be, it'll work for you if you're a little bit patient. So let me just quickly uh, recreate that. But we'll just search for, let's just say Wyoming and do, oops, there we go, and apply. And there we go. So that was pretty quick, 500, 493 results. Um, and one thing that, um, it gives you here in the table is your um, cover. So for oops, um, so for this plot, there is a 4.67% cover, uh, and you can see that that cover for each of the plots. And then if you have one, say if you have one with a like a really large coverage, you might say, well, I wonder, I wonder why that is, <clears throat> and you can. Uh, Click on the point and click on the photos. Let's see if this works. This one has photos. Oh, bummer. That one doesn't have photos, but um, uh, you can see that how you would do it is you'd click on there and if they're available, then you'll see the photos and if not, not. Um, so, uh, that species occurrence is um, is a, a pretty 
powerful uh, new tool that, that hopefully is useful for, for a bunch of people. Okay, I see that it's 2.45, and that's about my time before questions, and I pretty much made it through um, what I needed to show, I think. Uh, but uh, I see that there was a, a bunch of questions, but I wasn't able to actually read them. So um, if we wanna go through questions now, uh, should we do that? Absolutely, thanks. Thanks a lot, Mike. We can uh, we can go through some of those questions. We did get some uh, great questions as you were talking, um, and Sarah and Doug uh, did a great job answering them. So, mm. just for the folks on the recording, um, we can go ahead and repeat them. And if Sarah, Doug, and Mike, if you have anything to add, um, feel free to to jump in. Um, and you know, we have a couple minutes, fifteen minutes left until the end of the slot. So, if, if you do have additional questions, feel free to to keep answering them, and I'll try and get them them answered. So, the first one that we had um, that got one thumbs up at the top of the list here is, "What is LMF?" Um, so, I'll, I can give a, a stab at answering that as well. And if anyone wants to jump in, feel free. So, LMF it stands for Landscape Monitoring Framework. So, that's the national level version of AIM. So it uses effectively the same methods, the same indicators and collects very similar data um, and is effectively used for national level reporting efforts. Um, but we do also use that LMF data in um, kind of sm smaller scale um, projects and analyses as well. So um, it's it's very similar to AIM data. Um, it's just collected by the NRCS, but it's on public land on BLM BLM land. Did you have uh, anything else to add, Sarah, Mike, or Doug? Sounds right. And I, I'm sorry, I didn't actually um, use LMF as an example, but it's it's really um, very similar to, to Teradat. So um, if depending on the needs of your office and whether you look at LMF data. I don't know what the rules are about having to look at it or not. Um, you're going to interact with it the same way as you'd interact with Teradat through this application. And it gets imported into the same um, bench, that terrestrial benchmark tool um, on a different tab, but the same Excel table. So you use them together. Exactly. Thanks, Mike. And I think um, the reason update to that as well is that the, the attributes from LMF will kind of match up exactly to those in uh, in Teradata as well. So kind mm -hmm. of easy to to crosswalk the two. Yeah, you could, when you're using the benchmark tool, you can um, analyze them together. Uh, um, so uh, depending on how many points are around your location, you could potentially double your your um, your points. Um, just depends on where you are. Great, thanks a lot, Mike. Um, the next question was from Nick M. Um, the question was, with this app, is it necessary to zip the shapefiles prior to adding? So I'm, I'm assuming this is more based on that add data tool that you showed up in the top right. Um, and so Sarah answered that, yeah, we need to, you need to zip those shapefiles um, to be able to add them as layers. Yeah, there's even like a little icon with the zipper there to remind you. Great, thank you. Um, the next one was, is there a cheat sheet on how to develop queries using the AIM data portal? Um, and we do have that quick start guide on the left there, uh, as well as that splash screen that, um, that first pops up that has a few tips. But that quick start guide does give you some great info on, on how to build those queries. Um, if if there's something else that you need more than that, that we'd be happy to to get your feedback and and work on developing something that might be helpful. Um, yeah, and we added um, a little bit here on the this uh, the help panel on the right. Uh, this is a new one on how to get that the raw data, that related table data, as well. Um, honestly, the help on this one is a little bit light. Um, so if there are areas, and I know there's a, in a couple areas where people have got tripped up a little bit, we are planning to add some more help, um, like uh, with the um, 
find by area. Sometimes when you see this first screen here, it can be a little confusing. So we're going to add some specific help for that, for example. Great, thanks, Mike. Um, the next question from Anonymous was, uh, is there a max size of the data you can download? Um, and Doug answered that it's just 100,000 records. So uh, if you're going to need to download more than that, um, I would recommend probably reaching out to Mike or Doug for, um, for those yeah, large data Sometimes sets. if you're dealing with that much data, you might might be more useful or, or easier to use um, some of the other tools like the if you're using ArcMap, if you know how to do um, ArcMap stuff, um, we also do have uh, um, some tools that help you with, with that. Uh, so when you um, download the Terrestrial Benchmark tool, um, it has, let's see if I have it here. Um, it also has, besides the Excel file, it has a map document and a toolbox and a, and a help document here. So you can use ArcMap using our tools to select query and select uh, and export data that way, connected directly to um, SDE, our, our central database. Uh, and so that could be faster depending on how much data you have and where you are and how complex your project is. And Mike, we also have links to directly connect to the database on the geospatial gateway, don't we? Or the geospatial yeah. portal? Yeah. Um, so here is a MXD that's all set up with all the, the layers and the connections uh, and all the tables and everything. So if you use that, um, you'll have everything, um, all the data anyway. Uh, if you want the extra tools that help you uh, export data to a benchmark, then you use the benchmark tools. But just for viewing and looking and whatever you need to do, if you're just general uh, use, you can grab this MXD. Great, thank you, Mike. Um, I think the, the next question we had was based on uh, selecting data by multiple non-contiguous shapes. So you gave the example of the, the grazing allotments. Um, did you want to speak to that? Uh, I think somebody answered that. Who was the one that? Right, so yeah, D uh, we, there are a couple of different ways um, to do that. So Doug mentioned here in the chat that you can you could effectively add your own layer that just had those allotments in it that you were interested mm -hmm. in. Um, yep. Similar to the example that uh, Mike gave. Um, you can also use that the way that I've done it in the past is actually using that custom filter tool. Um, you could mm -hmm. filter the allotment layer that's already present there in the map um, and then do your query. Um, so, you know, filter by those those allotments, the names or the numbers that you're right. interested in and right. then do your query. Um, so a couple of different options there. Right. Yeah, the custom filter tool is a, is like a little tricky at first, but it gives you a lot more power once you kind of figure out how to use it. And you can also um, have multiple filters too. So that's kind of fun. Thanks a lot, everyone. I think that was the last question. Um, Oh, sorry, there was one more question that I skipped over, um, and that was, is there a way to verify the date of the data? Um, and so that, that'll be in your attribute table. There is a field um, named date visited that will have the, the, you know, the day, the month, the year that that data was collected in the field. Um, so a uh, great way to, to verify the, the date there. And thanks for sharing that, Mike. Yeah. And with that, yeah, I think that is that's all the questions. Thanks again to um, Sarah, Mike, and Doug. Um, I'll pass it over to you, Alita, for any uh, final comments. Oh, 
Um, just a reminder that these recordings will be available on the SharePoint and you can find our next recordings on the SharePoint as well down at the bottom on the calendar and we'll get those links posted at least a week in advance. Thanks.